Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger. Welcome to Daily Dream, yet another episode. This is like episode number Godzillion and one. <laughs> so I have a return guest today who I'm always excited to feature because she always gifts us with mini readings throughout our shows and everybody who's come on and been gifted with a reading ends up connecting with her, usually a booking a session because she's, it's mad crazy. Um, one of the things I like to say about my guest Sharon is that, well, I feel like I sort of discovered her. I was one of the first people just went, oh my God, she's amazing. And I've seen her in a huge room full of 150 people being put on the spot and having the event person point out somebody on stage and say, her, read her, and having Sharon stand up and God bless if she didn't just go 90 miles an hour reading this person because of her name and being so spot on, the woman on stage who is generally very nonplussed was beside herself with how do you even know this accuracy? So that's the kind of show that we are in for today, right? Talk about uh, stand and deliver. And just a little message for today about changing your personal reality. Like, isn't it a beautiful thing that at any moment we can make a new choice and a new decision and everything out here can complement the intention and the choice that we just made. I love that we have that kind of level of power and choice. So the starting place for transforming reality is always our own self. And your personal reality does indeed begin within you. So make a choice right now and make it powerful. Go big, right? Go really big. Why not? It was Henry Ward Beecher who said, the thankful heart will find in every moment some heavenly blessings. So a little bit more about my guest, my friend, Sharon Lynn Wyeth. She is here to share letter combinations and meanings. Here's what's so cool. She created this. This was her download from the universe, and it's called Namology Science. She uses it also quite professionally. She's hired by corporations, by HR departments, by lawyers, and more, and for people like you and me, who are just really fascinated by this stuff, or maybe you're dating and you wanna know about your partner, or maybe you're creating a book or a product. I've come to Sharon for this and said, well, what should I name my business? And she came up with a name that is so brilliant and I still get great compliments on it. So you can experience all of that through her brilliance and her genius. And today you're gonna to learn what does your name say about you? If you wanna learn more about her, her website is know the name, Dot com. And I want to start off by thanking my sponsor, Dr. Dane Here and Access Consciousness, for supporting this show and for showing so many people on the planet a really healthy way to heal through energy in a simple, profound way. You can find him at Dr. Dane, D A I N Here, H E E R dot com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. They have got classes all over the world, wherever you are. So Sharon, welcome back to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you. Debbie, it's always wonderful to join you. And I love Dr. Dane's name. He's got an incredible memory and he's very moral and spiritual and, you know, and a bit of a workaholic. And, <laughs> you know, but he's, he's literally come to work for the family of man. That's in his name. So I love his name. Okay, that is so amazing. I I'm going to have to have him listen to this. And there's something you've said about my name, and now I'm thinking about his name. So the second letter of my first name is an E, and you have said before that means I have a great sense of humor? A blessed sense of humor, yes. And you can connect with people really well. The E's are the people that come from the heart. So anyone in their first name, the first vowel, so it doesn't have to be the first letter. It's just the first vowel that you see when you're reading left to right. Literally, those are the people that connect from the heart. And I say all of us need more ease in our life. <laughs> <laughs> so if that's so, then uh, going back to Dr. Dane here, his last name is H-E-E-R. Is the same true in a last name to have the ease there? Well, it's read a little differently in the last name. And in fact, he has a double E. And so this is what he learned from the family, 
Okay, so this is what the family is like and what his early growing up years were like. And that double E means intuition and intuitive. So he has a very gifted family and he would have picked up intuitively what was going on and to use his own intuition and to develop that because his family would have supported it. Interesting. And what if they didn't support it? What would that mean? Okay, so when I say you get it from the family, you either, it was so apparent that you naturally copied it, or it was so missing that you went, oh my God, I need this. Now I see the reason for it. And you go out and find it. Okay. So it comes either extreme. So you either naturally get it because it's demonstrated all the time, or it's so needed in your life and it's so absent that now you see the value of it. So it's one extreme or the other. But if you hadn't seen it missing to get see the value, you wouldn't have gone and sought it. And so that's what I would say, you get it from the family. Whether you get it a positive way or a challenging way, you're still getting it, that need from the family. Yep, very accurate. So I wanna get caught up with you. And I know, I mean, you just keep growing. I know you teach namology and you create facilitators. You've got books, my God, you write a lot of books. It's very impressive. And you also, you're, you've got your own radio show. You are interviewed all the time. So what is the newest ways that you've been using namology for people or for corporations? Get us caught up. Oh, I love that question. Thank you, Debbie, for asking. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, the, the book in the, the first book, that's a authentic bestseller with no games, gimmicks, whatever, because I didn't know any better. <laughs> It had to get there on its own, um, is being translated into Spanish. So that should be coming out this summer. And then we're doing a second edition of the second book that is more explicit on how you can find your own seven reasons why you're here and making it easier to do that. And then, you know, the research is going on for Know the Name, um, Know the Health. And in fact, the research is almost done. I really just need to sit down and write. And so um, what I've been doing lately is literally going into different corporations and saying, put me on the spot. What can I do to help you? What can I do to serve you? You are my community. You know, I, I moved here two years ago. I don't know a lot of people because I keep traveling to go do things. And so um, I've literally been walking into businesses and saying, what is your business all about? Let me tell you how I can help you. And then I've literally done it right there on the spot to let them know the resource that they have in their own backyard. So that's what I've been doing lately. Very different. How bold, how awesome. I'm sure they're blown away, like totally cold to be read like that. When, um, okay, first thing, how awesome that you're being translated into Spanish. So is your first book going to be called Comprende el Nombre? <laughs> what is it going to be? <laughs> the title in Spanish. It would be Conozco. Conozco? Conos or conocer, and so I don't, or conocer uh, el nombre, conocer um, la persona, or el persona. And the health aspect, so I, okay, I actually should know that, because when I had my reading with you, you did go into that, and it's pretty crazy spot on. Talk to me a little bit more, because I'm pretty fascinated about how you navigate health and how you understand that for different people. Well, it's, it's in the letter combinations, the same way the personalities is in the letter combinations. I think the sound of the letters and whatever sound they make, that combination for whatever language you're speaking, okay, that combination is a vibration. And that vibration goes with personality traits. It goes with soul purpose and it goes with the health of the body. So there's, there's little things that started showing up for me. Um, I was doing a, a talk in Hawaii and I had privates there and this lady had been to umpteen doctors and nobody could figure out what was wrong with her. And I said, what's your name? And I said, you know what? I think it's your immunization system. I think your immune system is just off, you know? And she went down and she'd gotten checked by the umpteenth doctor. And sure enough, it was her immune system that was causing all these other things to happen. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else was going in for name surgery. And I said, you know, I bet you it's right there in those letters. And so that's like the letters ND. Like a lot of people have the letters ND combination, like in a Linda. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's that combination. And I started noticing that people with knee problems had that ND in their name, you know? And so... Anyway, I just started noticing different things, like the AN is the one with the immune system, that AN combination. 
So that means that almost all Armenians must have issues because, they, <laughs> right? The, their last names are almost all I A N. Right, or like Kardashian. Yeah. It, anyway, it's that. Anyway, so that A N combination. I started realizing that that's the immune system, and if you can, if you can find where a weak link is in your body, then you can say, okay, what am I going to do to prevent this? Hmm. Okay, so it's kind of like. Uh, when I had an ast astrological reading in eighth grade, I know I'm just a little strange. I went to my mom and I said, something's wrong with me because I think differently than everybody I know at school. Mm -hmm. So I must need a psychiatrist. So would you please send me to a psychiatrist? This is at 13 years old. And she just kind of looked at me and said, I'll tell you what, my best friend is an astrologer. I'll send you to her. And I said, okay. And if I don't get better, then can I go to the psychiatrist? And she said, yes, but you have to go see the astrologer first. So I went to the astrologer and it happened to be Afra Wesh, who was the astrologer for Hitler, one of the three astrologers that were not killed because she used her astrology to save her life. And that's a whole story in itself. But anyway, she was also interviewed for In Search Of because she had 100% accuracy of her predictions. Amazing, amazing woman. She was psychic on top of being an astrologer. So I went to see her. And one of the things I'll say is that she gave me the exact birthdays of my kids and they were exactly born on those days. I mean, she was just incredible. I was 13 at the time. So what she said was that I needed to be careful because in my system, my kidneys were my weakest link. And if I could take care of my kidneys, I would always stay healthy. So I decided at age 13, I was never going to drink alcohol because we already knew that alcohol had an effect on the kidneys. And what's very interesting to me is just two years ago, I got really sick. And the doctor said, had you been a drinker, your kidneys would not have made it through this. Wow. So it's very interesting to see. And I look at that and I went, there's got to be that stuff in the name. Because just if you can get it out of an astrology thing, you can get it out of a name. And so I really started looking. If I could help identify where people have their weakest link, like if you know you have an ND in your name, then you're going to be more gentle on your knees. You're not going to get in and out of the car with one leg at a time because that twists the knee that's being left behind. You're going to sit down, pull both legs in. And when you go to get out, you're going to take both legs out and then you're going to stand up. It takes, you're a little slower getting in and out of cars, but your knees aren't challenged. You know, if you know things like that, or if you're playing volleyball or another sport and you could have, you know, you could fall on those knees, you're always going to be wearing knee pads. You're going to take care of those knees. So if you always know where the weak link is, you know, to always take care of that weakest link, knowing that the rest then will take care of itself. Remind me what my weakness is, my physical weakness. In your name, I'd have to look it up, Debbie. I always have to look it up because I don't have them all memorized. Okay, I'm putting you on the spot in a, in a big way. No, um, that's what I don't have memorized. I don't have the health memorized yet. I have some of it memorized. As I'm writing the chapters, I actually memorize it. Extraordinary. Okay, um, so letters to reveal secrets hidden in names. I want to talk about decoding some of that because it seems to me like it's a, a treasure map to reveal the secrets. So could you give us a couple of the uh, little treasures we might find along the way so people can identify? Sure. Like some of the treasures is how do you first greet somebody when you first know them? You know that it's taking less and less seconds before we all have an opinion of somebody, right? So, and right now they're saying seven seconds and we've making up our mind already. That to me is just ridiculous. So if you only have seven seconds, what are you going to say to start a conversation? So that person already isn't going, oh my gosh. Okay, so for an example, if somebody has a first vowel of an A, doesn't matter, first letter, second letter, third letter, first vowel of an A, those people really don't like to have their time wasted. So even if you come up and say, hi, how are you? They're already going, oh my God, this is another time waster. You know, get to the point, <laughs> you know? And they don't want the long stories. It's like, what's the summation of the story already? Get to the point, you know? They just want the bullet points. That's why the itty bitty books are so popular. It's literally written for all those first vowel of an A people. And here's just the points. You don't have to read the whole book. You know, we just dissected the points out for you. And okay. is this just the first name or is this also the, the last name? First name. Okay. If it's in the last name, that's how the family was. Or 
the family so lacked it that you learned that's valuable. Either way. Interesting. Okay. So on the other hand, if the first vowel is an E, then those are the storytellers. Those are the relators. Those are the connectors. And you need those stories. And you need to start with, hey, how are you? How's it going? You need to connect first with the heart before you get into the work. Mm -hmm. Where the first vowel of an A, you need to connect with the work. What do we need to get done? Let's get it done. Now, when we are all done with our work, we can connect with the heart. And if you just know that slight difference, and then you learn right away in the book where the other vowels fall and how to connect with those people right away. If you just, you have seven seconds, you better be on target. Yeah. You know, especially, let's say you're pitching. You're pitching to get on a radio show or on a television show, mm. okay? Now, I learned this one, and I just started laughing when it happened. I was in a Steve Harrison seminar for a year. Okay, of course. And I went up to somebody that he had paired me with. And I went up and I said, here's my pitch, what do you think? And he said, you need to get to the point faster, give him the facts, and then tell him about yourself. And then we went up to Steve with it afterwards for him to look at it. And he says, you know, you really need to tell him about yourself and then get to the point. And I thought, wait a minute, that's just the reverse and you're both excellent. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's an A, he's an E, I get it. So right there I went, all right, so if you're pitching to one of the heart vowels, you want to go connect first and then tell your story briefly and then get to the point. But if you're connecting- Oh my God, could I just stop you for a second? I just had this huge aha. This is so interesting. So having been doing what I'm doing for as long as I'm doing it, 12 years thus far on air, I have always felt a bit different than podcasters who have just come on the scene, and a lot of them don't mind the social media pitches and don't mind people coming right up and sending them stuff. Me, I'm like, if you do that, you'll never get on the show. Build a relationship with me first, and then we'll open the door. And I never connected Debbie with an E to having that need for, may not be heart necessarily with everybody, but definitely to have a connection first. Otherwise, it feels ooey like a first date trying to have sex or something. It's like, nah, don't go there. You know, exactly. This is amazing. <laughs> but it was, it was the aha that I got out of Steve Harrison's, you know, one of the things we did there. And I went, oh my gosh, here it is, black and white. Hello, I should know better. You know, <laughs> I know the yeah. last. But that just, started me into how do you apply it in more places? Okay, people like, who have an O, in their first name is their first vowel? They wanna tell you what to do. So you come up and you would ask a question. How do you like to receive your pitches for somebody to get on your show? You're gonna ask and then you're gonna do whatever they tell you. They like people that follow directions. <laughs> Army sergeants, I imagine. Well, you know what, they would be good at it, but they're very good to the people around them. They're nurturers. Mm -hmm. They want to take care of everybody around them and they want loyalty in return. They expect loyalty in return, and if you're not loyal, it's like that's what really hurts their heart. Now, what's really interesting is O's and E's is the best combination to get around. We went through 10,000 marriages because I wanted to find the patterns. What vowels are connecting with what vowels? Where are the problems? Which ones are getting divorced? Which ones are having issues? Which ones get along the best and have the longest marriages? And the O and the E are the, is the best combination. They have the longest marriages and stuff. And they get along the best because they're both physical in nature. They like that touch stuff. They like that, I love you. They like that mush stuff. They like that romantic stuff, you know. And I'm sorry, you can tell I'm not an E and an O. <laughs> Hilarious. I'm so happy as you're saying this because my boyfriend, his first vowel is an O. And so far, bing, 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 everything you're saying. It's very easy to be with him. Yes, because that's the best, that's the easiest connection. So mm -hmm. for A's, like myself, it's an A with an A. That's the easiest connection. And the next easiest is an A with an I. Okay? But everybody, but there's different combinations out there. So the same thing is you're looking at the vowels, what makes the best business partners? Yes. The best business partners is not always the same as who makes the best lovers and intimate partners. Hmm. Okay. And so what are you looking for there? Is this an 
um, you know, I have these strengths, you have those strengths kind of right. cognition. You need to balance each other and you need to be compatible that you can understand each other. And at the same time in business, you want to be bringing different gifts to the table because if you have a duplicate who needs you, <laughs> you know, I can do that myself. I want somebody with different gifts as they come to the table. Okay. Give us an example. What's a good combo for business partnership? Okay, a good combo for business partnership is an A with an O. Because, a because A's love to accomplish and they're your workaholics. They are the backbone of your business. They will do all the dirty grunt work that nobody else wants to do. And when it gets done, if somebody will just say, good job, that's all the A needs. <laughs> they're looking for a praise. They're looking for approval. The O loves to give directions. And the O doesn't like to have to check up on people. So when the O says, hey, we need this done, the A says, okay, they go and do it. They come back and deliver it on time because they hate missing a deadline. And the O goes, great. <laughs> but the O can see what needs to get done and what it will, and in what order. The A will follow the directions. Man, don't you just want to hire Sharon right now? I mean, I do. I just feel like, come in, manage the company. Who should I hire? Where, you know, where, because this creates so much ease what you're referring to. I love this. And we're like opening up that much of the door, the crack of the door. So we're going to do a very quick shout out here. And then we're coming back to our first amazing human who's here to get her mini reading with Sharon. And you look so beautiful, Rissell. And you're listening to Dare to Dream, a radio and podcast Listen, you can be part of the Dare to Dream team. Just go to patreon.com slash dare to dream and you can donate to the show. Cup of coffee, $1 more. You can help us keep going and help the business costs and all the mishigas, as they say in Yiddish, to keep this amazing engine going and the amazing guests that we have come on. Listen, you're here to create big things and live a big, bold, free life. Why not step into it full and become part of this team? Have everything come into your inbox first and be on the cutting edge pulse of what's going on. Just go to patreon.com slash dare to dream. And thank you in advance. The show will always be free to you and a donation is so appreciated. This is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream. So if you're just tuning in, my guest today is Sharon Lynn Wyeth. Her website is knowthename.com. And she can explain to listeners and watchers what your gifts are and what your name tells you about who you are and so much more. So I just want to say welcome to Rissell. And of course, you could see the spelling of her name, R-E-S-S-E-L, and her last name, Y-U. So Sharon. Meet Rissell. Rissell meets Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Hi, I think I met you at the New Media Summit very briefly. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. No, I'm she was not right. there. You can probably tell on my name. <laughs> I was going to say, because your name is very familiar to me. So I think I've, I've seen it before because I've looked at it before. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Well, it's great seeing you and meeting you again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so in your name, do I have permission to read? Yes. Okay. Please. I always like permission first. Thank you. Okay. You are incredibly honest. You cannot stand it when somebody's not completely honest with you, when they leave out part of the story so that you have the wrong conclusion, or that, you know, because they're leaving out details, or they led you down the wrong pathway, or they weren't upfront about something, or they didn't warn you ahead of time of something, and they knew something, and you didn't know it, and they didn't share it. You can't stand that. It's like, ugh, don't want to be around that person anymore. I may have to be polite, but uh, I don't want to give you a second chance. And because you don't like to give people second chances if they've been dishonest with you in any way. You also have a really rebellious spirit. Cannot stand to be told what to do. You can be asked and you don't mind, but to be told, oh, who do you think you are to tell me that you know something better than I do for myself? Hello, not happening. Okay, so you've got that nice rebellious spirit. And the reason I say it's nice is I find those people, uh, people that have that kind of rebellious spirit, 
develop really good discernment over the years. So if somebody does something to you, shame on them, but you'll never give them or anybody else an opportunity to do anything like that to you again that falls in that same category. It's like you'll learn it the first time, oh, this gets us in trouble. It's like if somebody tells you, oh, trust me, you'll learn honest people don't say, oh, trust me. So the ones that are saying that, they're the dishonest ones, Somebody can say that once, you'd believe them. The second time you go, oh yeah, right. That's a nice warning bell. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, you have it in your name that you can learn from other people, that you're willing to learn from other people so you can learn from a teacher. But you have no patience for not getting your answers fast enough, you know, your questions answered. So when you're learning something new, you want that person sitting right next to you to give you those answers immediately when you come to a stumbling block. However, the minute you've got the foundation and you've caught on to what it is you're learning, then it's like, okay, I got it. Now go away. Get out of my face. Don't micromanage me. Now you're sitting too close. <laughs> so the challenge is how do you nicely transition to thank you so much for your time and effort and I'm done. Go away. You know? <laughs> okay. The other thing is you're a detective. You want to know everybody's background story. You want to know what makes them tick. Who is that person behind the scene? What am I seeing? What's really going on behind you know, whatever they're, they're saying. You can literally read between the lines on what's really going around. And so you give people really good advice, you know, and you'll see that a lot of your friends come and dump their problems on you. This is also true for you, Debbie. They come and dump their problems on you because they know that you're going to give them good advice and you're a good listener. So all of that little piece is also true for you, Debbie. What's interesting in your name is it says as you're as your life gets older, your life gets better. Okay, so you stack the deck. You said, I don't want to have my good years up front or in the middle and then not have the good years over there because some years are always better than other years. I'm going to stack the deck so that every year gets a little better than the year before with rare exception so that my best year are at my end. So that way I don't know, oh, it could have been better and look at this. <laughs> But that way, it's always improving. The other thing is you have a lot of self-confidence, and, and that's been growing over the years also. But you really believe in yourself. It's like you have a nice, strong sense of ego. And able to see in this culture of the United States, you have to have a nice, strong sense of, of self and ego. Because if not, with all the times everybody gets pushed down, right, like those pop-up dolls, you've got to be able to get back up again. And so you've got that nice, strong ego so that if you're pushed down, like the pop-up doll, you're going to pop right back up again and go, oh, yeah, watch this. <laughs> you know, and you combine that with that rebellious spirit. And it's like, I'm going to show you. You just wait. <laughs> you know, because no, you're not going to let somebody get you down. You have an interesting combination in your name. And that says you're a little bit nosy. Now, I have to say something, which is one of your challenges, right? <laughs> so we all have seven challenges in our name. Okay. And one of your biggest ones is wanting to know too much about others because that way you feel empowered. Okay. Cause so if you, it, it's like, it's a false sense of power. If I know enough about you, then I feel safe and I have power. And I know that's a subconscious thing because it, it does, it's not in your face in your name, but it's, it's a challenge on what are you going to do with the knowledge once you get it? That's where the challenge is. Because okay. you're going to get it. But are you going to tell it to others in a conversation so they'll look at you and go, oh, you must know that person better than me because look what you know about them that I don't know. Are you going to use it? That's a power gig. Okay. Or are you just not going to say anything until that person needs help and then say, hey, guys, can we all gather around? They're in the hospital and they need help or they need their house cleaned or whatnot. Something happened. Can we go help them? How are you going to use that knowledge that you have? Because it's like you accrue knowledge on people. Okay, like you really know the people around you, and you know what's happening in their lives. How are you going to use that knowledge? Are you going to use it to gossip or are you going to use it as an aid? Right. Okay, big okay. challenge. One of the things that your soul said, uh, how are you going to learn this? So your upbringing is the, is the you, the maiden name? That is my married name. Oh, so he brought a lot of humor into your world. You he must laugh me. a lot with him. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because you've got humor and there is a tremendous amount of humor there. He also would be very spiritual. He would have grown up in a spiritual family, not religious, but very spiritual. Right. You know, and so that that's really important. So what's his first name, if you don't mind me asking? Stephen. 
Stephen, okay, so there's a lot of humor. I will give you just one suggestion in your marriage. Okay. If he ever puts you down in any way whatsoever, on purpose, not on purpose, it doesn't matter how it happens, okay, you will help him learn never to do that if you so overreact that he thinks you've gone crazy and need to go to a mental <laughs> hospital. He <laughs> said, <laughs> <laughs> okay? Okay. Because he doesn't want to hurt you, but I don't think he notices what he does when he does that. He's not as aware. Okay. So to make him aware, if you overreact, he will think twice before something like that slides out again. And if you do that, every time something slides out and you may have to do it like five times, I'm just telling you, that okay. each time you just so overreact and so have a hissy fit, he will learn really watch your words with her. Do not let anything slip and slide. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Because if not, the longer you're with him, the more that'll slip. Okay. And we, we don't want that to become a habit. Right. Okay? But he's very charismatic. You, you were attracted to him on a physical basis. You thought that <laughs> man is gorgeous. I'm going to get, go get to know him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Down that road. We all know where it goes. <laughs> Anyway, that's this is a small sampling of what we can get out of your name. That is amazing. It was so on point. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Rosa. I, I, I have a quick question for you on behalf of Rosal, just because I'm so, I find this so fascinating, what you can do. So in, inherent in Rosal's name, and I don't know if you need the maiden name or if that's even important, but it does it give you an indication of what she ought to be doing or what her soul wanted her to do in this lifetime? Um, yes, it does. And normally when I do all of that, I get the maiden name and the parents' names and I get all of that. So I just need your maiden name to also look at that. Oh, interesting. My maiden name is Morales. Okay, got it. So, um, one of the things you would be very good at is being a detective. Um, okay. Um, and, or being an investigator. Okay. Being some kind of a sleuth. Okay. Another thing that you would be very good at is if you wanted to go into psychology and you wanted to be a counselor with that psychology, uh, that would be something that's in your name that you're, you would be very, very good at. Um, another thing that you would be very good at is being able to uh, help other people identify what their strengths are and where their weaknesses are and what they would be good at. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew Debbie was going to laugh at that one. <laughs> This is so amazing. Yes, she is amazing. I actually am, I have a psychology degree, so that's very, well, so on point. You're amazing. <laughs> But those would be all good things. In fact, if you, you know how on television that they have at the law firms, they have that investigative person, like, go find out the truth about this. And then those people use all these shenanigans that they're really using psychology to get to the other person and get the information they need. That would be perfect for you. Hmm. Nice. What? So because you're good with people and you'd figure it out. Yeah. So this is crazy. So I, I just think you should share. So this is like comes full circle because I, I don't know how much you can say because I know you, if you don't mind, Russell, just say what you do and then maybe you can connect a little bit. You don't have to share who the company is or anything, but connect a little bit about what you're doing that's akin to what Sharon just said, that piece you've just added. Right. Well, I am actually a quantum healer. And I help people remove blocks from um, their physical body so that they can move forward in life in whatever way they choose. So I help um, men, women, children, and even animals. So first you got to go digging in there and figure out where the block is. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so yes, I'm very much a detective. <laughs> well, that's, that's so in your name. Yeah. Awesome. You are amazing. Wow. This is better than a psychic reading, huh? <laughs> well, I can, I can do a whole lot that, that the psychics can give you. A lot of that is sitting in your name. Yeah. A whole, a whole lot of it is your timing is sitting in your name. Your, you know, the seven lessons of why you came is sitting here, why you had your parents that you did, 
you know, what did you gain from having your parents? That one of the beautiful things I think is a lot of people have issues with their parents. And once they realize what they gained from having that parent, they start looking at their parent as a person and being thankful instead of like, oh my God, you know what, how that was works, you know, like that. So um, anyway, it, it's just, it's interesting that what you really can find in a name. And I'm always discovering new little patterns or new little things, you know, so the people I teach, they get on the calls with me once a month. And then I'm starting to share all that new stuff. I'm going, Hey guys, have you noticed this pattern? It's been showing up lately. <laughs> Where do you do your classes, Sharon? How do people get connected with that? Well, I've got one class coming up right outside of Jackson, Mississippi, this um, Friday and Saturday. Um, they're on my website, knowthename.com, and then just go to schedule. And as you go to the schedule, that's a calendar, and just look for where it says Namology Science Level 1. And then just flip through the calendar and see where it is. And when you click on it, then it gives you the details. And they're all in person, or you have things online as well? I do it three ways. One, I do in person. Two, I do it in an online class. I do one online class a year for people that don't want to travel but want the in-person effect. Okay. Okay. But then you miss out on all the goodies I always put on the tables. But anyway, then, um, and the other thing is, I have a kit which we send out and then you get to join us online for a year afterwards. And just so that you're not left on your own device if you're going to buy the kit, which is six discs each two and a half hours that literally was taped of me doing a class. Mm -hmm. So you can do it that way. And the disadvantage of that is you don't get to ask a question like you're in a class. However, at the end of every disc, we say, call us. What are your questions from this disc? So you still get to ask in person. You just don't get it as immediate. You get it at the end of the disc. Amazing. Okay, well, thank you, Rissell. Thank you so much for being on. This was awesome. Yes, it was. Thank you so much for having me. And it was so wonderful meeting you, Sharon. <laughs> you too. Wishing you the best. Thank you. Bye. Okay. And before we head into our next amazing listener, caller, watcher, exclusively for Dare to Dream, people only for my team, my Dare to Dream team, I have a really unique deal for you with Thinkific. And it's available only to you. There's a three months free business plan at thnk.cc slash dev. So what's Thinkific? If you don't know, it creates markets and sells your online courses. I even have mine on my website. Ha! You know, I don't know, websites are so passe right now. So I also keep them on Thinkific and that's where everybody's going to buy stuff. This is where your platform can grow, share your knowledge, scale your business. It doesn't matter if you have 10 students or 10 million worldwide students, this is the platform for you. It is so genius and drag and drop, I can't tell you. Easiest technology and truly the best support in the business. Go to thnk.cc slash Deb. Again, you get three months free with that unique URL only for a full business plan so you can start making money as an entrepreneur or as a small business owner. And um, before we get started with our next guest, I just have a quick question for you, Sharon. And you mentioned in the last reading that when you go through somebody's name, one of the things you can do is talk about timing. I'm really curious, what do you mean by timing? What kind of timing can you talk about in someone's name? You get the theme for every year and what you're supposed to be focused on during that year and what you're gonna be learning. So like when you have the seven purposes and reasons you're here, you can literally see in your name when you gave yourself the time to learn that, when it's time to focus on that particular lesson and when you had it in your name that that lesson would be completed by. And it even tells you in your name what needs to happen so you know you're done, you know? And so let's say that one of your lessons was to learn how to get from Los Angeles to New York. Well, you <laughs> Start off by walking and after a while you think oh this is going to take me more than my lifetime to do this one right so then you start hitchhiking then after a while you say you know what cars are pretty good but maybe I could get a job and then I could get on a bus or a train but your name shows you where the airplane ticket is what to do so you can get there faster hmm cool and then you can even shift up to that jet that gets you there like in an hour or less well, I want to go on the Star Trek thing where they dissolve you and re-banish you somewhere else. 
you know, put your molecules back together. 100%. I'm with you. I'm a Trekkie. So I, uh, I'll go on that expedition when you go to Sharon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's go exploring. Okay. So gives you that information, which I think is incredibly valuable. I do too. 100%. So cool. It's like a soul journey timing and all that. And um, so we're going to beam up our next guest. We've got Orna <laughs> Wilkins here. And Orna, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Hi. Thank you so much for asking me. I'm super excited to be here. I know. I'm super excited for you to meet Sharon. Sharon, meet Orna Walters. And I'll let you two take it from here. Okay. First, hello, Orna. So what is most important for you to know? Right now, where's your focus? What do you want me to talk on first? Notice she's an O, so I'm asking her for direction. Uh, uh, well, uh, I would say I'm a very hard worker. Uh, some would say I'm a bit of a workaholic. I'm definitely a worker bee, so my energy is steady, strong. But I've been hitting some places where I feel like I'm paddling against the current. And so I don't mind working hard, but I'd like to be with the current. You know, I'd like to be in the flow of things happening a little bit more. Um, I mean, I don't, again, like, I mean, easy is the word that's coming to mind, but I don't need it to be quote unquote easy. I will work hard. I just want to know how I can have a support system so I feel like I'm going with the current instead of against the current. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. And so first of all, you are incredibly likable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we all know you're not going to change who you are to get liked because you're already likable. You've already worked on you. You've already improved that personality. So really, if somebody doesn't like you, it's in your name. They have the problem, not you. Don't take it personally. You just know they're messed up. Okay. So, um, so one of the things that could be of assistance for you, Orna, is organization. Okay. Keeping track of everything and keeping it all organized and keeping in the right piles and the right places and whatnot. It's like you are good and a hard worker and you can see everything that needs to be done. But your name says it's better off if you tell somebody else what you want done and get them to do it for you than you having to do it all the time. So you need to hire some assistants, you know, either a virtual assistant, but you're more of a people person. So you need to get them. You really want to have the body there where you can watch and interact and change your mind and then give them new directions. Okay. And you're going to need somebody else who's a workaholic for you that also has fairness issues that know that you're going to treat them fairly and they're going to give you fair work for a fair price. Okay. Because you can't stand it if somebody tries to take advantage of your good nature. <laughs> Okay. You hit the nail on the head. I definitely have a thing about being fair. I was born on my brother's birthday. So <laughs> I, my joke about my childhood is I didn't have anything that was my own. I didn't even get my own birthday, you know? So <laughs> I really felt like that's where the fair, like that didn't feel fair that I didn't get my own birthday. You know, like I really have a thing about treating people fairly. I tend to be very generous. Um, my husband well, you and I take have care of them. Together. You nurture them. Yeah. And stuff. You expect loyalty in return. And it's like, if somebody's not loyal after you've been so good to him, so good to whomever that person is, that's what really hurts your heart. Mm -hmm. It's like, how could you do that? And if somebody speaks badly about somebody else, you're looking at them going, even if it's true, why are you spreading negative news? You know, and you hold it against <laughs> that person and not the person they were talking about. You Amen. Know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you got it. So I don't know if you want my maiden name, Sharon, if that's helpful to you, or we're just um, working with uh, my, my unique first name. Because you asked a question that's here and now, I'm working with your here and now name. Okay. Okay. If you were asking a question more on what are your seven life lessons, what are your whatnot, then I'd need the maiden name because that's where it sits. Okay. That's good to know. I, I really, I'm totally fascinated about, you know, how this works and what I don't, I didn't really know, you know, what to expect. So I don't know what, what it is that you can tell by my name. So I didn't really know. My joke is that from what you like in the bedroom to what you are like in the boardroom and everything in between, we can tell in a name. Cool. It pretty much covers it. <laughs> so um, in, I would say you need to hire some assistants, get them working on your tasks, and then and get somebody who's really good at organization. Yeah, I mean, I do have a team, and I'm I'm definitely the systems person on our team. So when I 
bring a new person on. I mean, the person that does our assistance support work has been with us for like seven years and she's awesome. And she's, you know, she, she and I are very much in alignment and, um, but I definitely, you know, the organization piece is definitely I have down because I'm a systems person. Excellent. Because, but you need somebody, you need help in that because it's taking too much of your time because you're an overviewer. It's yes, you can do it. And you're an overseer. It's like you're the CEO and the Indian chief knows all the parts and how all the parts work and how to do them. But the Indian chief's supposed to delegate. Okay. So that you can keep growing and doing the next step and not get trapped in the day by day. If that makes sense. It does. I'm a little bit confused because I do that. I mean, and I am the CEO, by the way. I, I'm like, so I'm the CEO and I definitely delegate and I definitely hand over tasks and I love the support that we get from our team right now. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit confused about how to switch things up so that I feel like things are in the flow. I have an intuitive hit here. What if, what if, Sharon, you switch gears just a little bit and, and instead of going for that uh, question, just talk to Orna about personality stuff and maybe the ease will be revealed within there. Of where okay, great. Flows and and I have the first name of your employees. Um, yes, we have Michelle. And then, I mean, I wouldn't consider him an employee because we're, you know, we're married and we work together, but I, I co-work with my husband and his name is Matthew. And we have certainly other people on our team that do other things, but Michelle is definitely my direct person that I delegate most things to. And then my husband handles the technology people and that's that end of things. I, okay. I kind of, I, that's where we made the division, right? So... That's good because he likes to take everything to the extreme. Um, so do you have one L or two L's in Michelle? Oh, two L's. Yeah. Okay. M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E. Yeah. So do you know that she's a very gifted writer? But she I, likes Yeah, actually, I do. Okay. And she's got a generous heart. She's really good at manifesting. Sometimes do you ask her how she wants to get something done versus doing it your way? Oh, yeah. I don't tell her how to do things. I just tell her the end result I'm looking for and then she gets good. It. Good, because that's how she works the best. But, you know, she does some things the hard way. The reason she does things the hard way, okay, which would drive you nuts because you're like, bottom line it, let's get there. And she could be going around the, the Mary Bush, you know, for a while first before she bottom lines it. And so if she understands that why she does that is because if it comes too easy, then when she goes back to do it again, she forgets how easy it was. I mean, she remembers that it was easy, but she forgets what she did. And then she spends so much time going, how did I do that last time? It was so easy last time that instead she makes things hard so that her memory will tell her how hard it was. So then she'll know to improve it the next time around. So she's got to learn how, when something's easy, write it down. She's mm -hmm. got to start making herself a booklet of how to do whatever's. Okay. Cool. So when she Figure something out that's easy, she needs to write it down. So the next time it comes around, instead of wasting time thinking, oh my gosh, that was so easy, she can go, oh, we did this. It's in my book. Let's go read it. Okay. And that, that way she can start doing things easier because she won't be making it harder to help her memory because she'll have her little cheat book. Okay, cool. Okay. Now, the other thing is that's very interesting is she's a natural leader where you're an assigned leader. Okay. So the more you can give her that she's totally in charge of, the better she's going to work. Okay? Yeah. I mean, again, she's been with us like seven years. So, you know, it didn't start off with all of the responsibilities she has now, but really, you know, we have a team meeting once a week and, you know, and, and monthly meetings with the bigger team, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, it's a pretty well oiled machine in that regard. And I just want to jump in here. We're only going to have a few minutes because we're, we're already into a 12 minute reading. So let's, let's put a cap on this and, and maybe do some kind of wind down. I don't know how deep you want to get into this business part, but maybe you just want to do a general name thing for Orna um, and just share some of that in, in the couple of minutes that you guys have left. And I, and I also want to throw in there, I, I was thinking when you started with her, because Orna will have to go back and listen to the show because she, um, Sharon goes through all the vowels and it's really pretty fascinating. 
And I'm reflecting on something you said in the beginning, Sharon, which was that for me as an E-D-E-B-B-I, that my best partnership, love connection and so forth is with someone with an O for their first vowel and Orna is an O. So does that mean that we are that compatible? We should be married? <laughs> I'm, I'm taken, Deb, but I do love you dearly. <laughs> and remember when I said that O's and A's are the best ones to work together? You know, those are really good compadres, and here we've got it. And, 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 and her husband, right? With the O and the A. Oh, that's right. And you know what? If I could just pipe in here for a second, because um, Debbie and I have known each other for many years, but we recently found out that we have the exact same middle name. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you have any insights on that, because that was quite a surprise, because my middle name is Tova, and I've certainly met people who have that as a first name. But when, when Deb and I discovered, I was like, what? You're a Tova, too. So do you spell it with an H on the end? We both don't, T-O-V-A, exactly the same. Okay. Well, I was just interesting because that's a, that's a good Jewish name, and some of them have H's and some of them don't. I know. I kind of wanted that H. I'm a little pissed at my parents that I didn't get the H at the end. <laughs> it wasn't fair. That <laughs> wasn't fair. There's that fairness thing. You're right, Dad. So hilarious. So that, that Tova makes your drive. You've always got to be the best. You've always got to be the one on top, you know. You're not going to go after something unless you know you can conquer it. So it's like, eh, I'm not putting my energy there because I can't do that or I don't want to do that. You know, it's like an all or nothing that comes from that. But when you both have the same middle name, it's, it normally indicates that you were connected somehow in your last life on earth. Hmm. So you were either oh, and no. connected or you were both doing the same thing in different areas. Like you could have both been nuns, but in different nunneries. Okay, or you could have both been, um, you know, it says here that you would have used charm and charisma to get your needs met in your last life because the middle name is always the last life. <laughs> All right, I love having that in common with you, Deb. I do too. <laughs> That's some good stuff there, people. Cool. Any, any suggestion you have for Orna before we? Um, yeah, I would just say one thing because Michelle is a natural leader. And because like you're an O and so we're going to start off, by the way, A's only work for O's as long as they're confident. If not, the A's take over. Okay. So, um, but because that she's that I, have you ever said to her, what can I do for you that can help you? If you want something. Yeah, actually. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's a lot of the stuff that we dealt with in the first few years of her being on our team. And as we handed her more stuff, uh -huh. that's definitely been a regular theme right? To say, how can we best support you? We know we have, you have a lot on your plate. So how can we, you know, yeah. how can we best That's what's going to keep things smooth and oiling is to make sure she's got enough on her plate. And if she had somebody that assisted her, you would watch the oil just get really, really slick and smooth. Oh, okay. So she needs to be able to delegate. That's All right. Important. That's good to know. Cool. So we definitely let her oversee a lot, you know, like when we, uh, there are certain projects that literally she manages and then she only brings Matthew and I in once it's at a certain place where we, you know, then like she gets to be our eyes and ears a lot. And so it works out really well. I mean, I got to say out of, you know, that, you know, that saying, right, good help is hard to find. I got to say, um, when Michelle finally just, she had done certain projects with us, but when she finally decided to come online as our um, online business manager for our business, I mean, both Matthew and I were celebrating because she hold, we hold a lot of the same values. And so we've given her a lot of autonomy to just here, this is what we need done now, you know, go fly. She has a really good scientific mind. Plus she's got that writing ability, but it's almost like if you really want everything to go smooth, she needs to be overseeing some helper. She okay. needs to help her in her area, and she needs to be the boss of that person. She, okay. she needs to be the boss. She needs to lead somewhere, okay? And if she could lead and get help, you can keep dumping more on because she can split it with the other person, and at the same time, she can lead, and that would make her heart happy. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, Thank my gosh. You. That was so Thank interesting. You so much. You're Thank welcome. you. Thanks for coming on, beautiful. You look amazing. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank and you. Bro. Oh, my pleasure. My Quick pleasure. question here at the end. We have um, 
I'm curious. So I know you also help families communicate. We literally just have a minute or two. So using Namology, you help families communicate better. You help couples, you help families. I think that's fascinating. Can you just give a, a brief overview? What is that process? Well, we go in and I look at everybody's name and I say something about everybody so that they know I've got them and I understand them and it's not a general thing. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody can say, oh, well, you could say that about everybody. Okay, I wanna be very specific with people so they, they can get it in a very short period of time that I can see them clearly. And then I start saying what bothers them about everybody else in the room. And I literally go around the room and say, this wow. is what bothers you about that one. This is what bothers you about that one. This is whatever. And then when I get through saying what's bothering everybody, I go, this is how you fix it. And there's small little tweaks. And so then I say, could you do this? Would you be willing to do that? And then I look at the other person and say, would that feel better when that happens that way? Would you accept that better? And we literally do that so that, there's good communication and everybody understands it's how something is being said or done. It's not the intent behind it. Cause usually the intent is just fine, you know, but it's, we all get our little pricklies is what I call them. Like, like for an example, I have certain friends that like to call me instead of dear, they, instead of using my name, they'll call me dear. That one I don't mind so much, but deary. I don't know what it is about deary. I think, Oh, that's so demeaning. Do not, I'm not answering to a deary. I'm not your deary. <laughs> you know, I just, I don't like that. So for, you know, me, I just go, please don't call me that, mm. you know, because I'm not going to respond. And then you're going to get upset when I ignore that, <laughs> you know, and don't respond to you. So if sometimes though, it's hard for people to stand up for themselves and stand up for what's important to them. And so I literally become their voice. It bothers this person when you do this, could you do it this way? Would you be willing to tweak it? And it's really easy to see what small tweaks could be there. And then you go to back to the person and say, would that work for you? Would that sound better? How would you feel if they did it that way? You know, so you're literally educating each other on the small little tweaks we can do. For an example, for your honey, I would say, when you walk in the door, you had better be ready to have a kiss and a hug. Period. That's how you greet her when you come home. You haven't seen her? Come in with a kiss and a hug then have a conversation. Thank you so much. Exactly. You know, but, but for me, if you're coming home, when you come home, you better download right away what happened in your day and all the facts. And if you're ready for dinner, oh. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's so different. Mm. And then after the dishes are done, then we'll talk the honey love stuff. Okay. So it's very, very different. It's very different. And what, so what about Rob and Orna? They both start with an O. What do they need when, they, when, when their person walks in the door? Okay. So they need everybody in that family and in that house to run to them and give them hugs and say, welcome home. How was your day? Tell us about it. What can we take from you? How do we get you comfortable? <laughs> how do we help you relax? In other words, can we bring you a drink? Can we, whatever? It's like, how can we serve you? Oh my gosh. This is so hilarious. I'm ready to do a reality show with you, Sharon. I really am. It would be like never ending. It would be fun. <laughs> it would be so fun. Uh, the, the possibilities are beyond the beyond. I mean, just to do a dating show with you, I think would be so incredible. Like, don't date this, or if you're going to get involved with that person, be aware of this, or that person's compatible. It's, I find it all very fascinating. So again, second, third time, I don't know how many times you've been on the show, but you'll be on again. Thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, thank you, Debbie, for having me on. And I will be happy to look back up in my notes again, what's in your name for that oh, health. <laughs> thank you so much. I know I got very curious when you said that the timing thing is like, okay, this, this may be another reading. Um, so, again, you can find her at, give us your website. Uh, knowthename.com. And so if you're driving, if you're somewhere where you can't write it down, all you have to do is go, oh, I need to remember the name. What was the name? Oh, yeah, that was it. I need to know the name.com. <laughs> <laughs> I end today's show with this quote from author Shalman Rushdie. Names, once they are in common use, quickly become mere sounds their etymology being buried like so many of the Earth's marvels beneath the dust of habit. 
Next week, you can tune in and I'm featuring the amazing Dr. Bradley Nelson, who talks about the emotion code and the body code. And he actually goes through some healing experiences with me and others. I'm telling you, this guy's crazy. He's so connected now with Dr. Uh, with Dr. with, with uh, Tony Robbins, who wrote the forward to his new book, The Emotion Code. Really worth checking out the work he does. And if you'd like to get these in your inbox every week, just subscribe, leave a five-star review, subscribe, and you'll get it on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger or iHeartRadio, BBS Radio, or all the many, many podcasts I'm featured on. Thank you so much for joining and for being willing to dare to dream with us today.